Thank you, Commissioner, for mm -hmm. agreeing to come on today. Um, and we're just going to start with some you know, simple background questions, you know, things to let people know who you are. Okay. Uh, so firstly, uh, tell us what life was like for you while you were in high school. <laughs> First, Michael and Emmanuel, thank you for the invitation. Um, and you're asking me to go back many, many, many years ago, probably before dinosaurs. I feel like I'm that old. Uh, but when you say what was life for me or life like for me in high school, um, I'm a product of the Osceola schools. Um, and my dad actually taught at Valley Middle School here in Apple Valley, um, Egan. Um, but life for me back then, grew up in Brooklyn Park. And it was a district or a community at the time where we were one of the only um, families of color in the community. And I was definitely one of the only students of color at Osceola High School back in the mid 80s or early 80s. What was it like? Uh, it was interesting. I, I, I can't complain. Um, I was someone who participated in extracurricular activities, whether it was band or, or, or um, the musicals, or I, I played basketball and ran track and things of that nature. And, and so I think on the outside, um, people would have said my high school experience was, you know, wonderful and all that good stuff. Um, there were some things in it, you know, being one of the only students of color in a school or a community. Um, there was some pain with that. There was some, some moments in time where, you know, you go home and you're talking to your parents and uh, you're struggling a little bit. But all in all, I had a good experience. Interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Um, mm -hmm. Now for more of like a simple, funner question. Uh, like. Do you like to listen to music? And if so, what do you listen to? And so that's an interesting question. When you first asked me what was life like, you know, I'm the oldest of three. Um, and my, my mom and dad come from big families down south uh, outside of Memphis. And so when you, I'm the oldest grandchild on either side. And so when someone says, you know, music, you know, and what do I like in music? I grew up in music. Um, lots of music in the house, dancing, having a good time. If somebody were to ask me, what do I, um, I'm a percussionist, so I play the drum set and all that kind of stuff. Um, if somebody said, what kind of music do I listen to? Well, I have, a, I have a, two bambinos, a son and a daughter. They're both at the U. So a lot of the music I end up listening to is what's on their playlist when they're in my car. Mm -hmm. And so you can get rap, hip hop, um, R&B. Um, every blue moon, my daughter will go into eclectic type stuff. And, and I, I like salsa and merengue. Well, I can definitely do that. But then, you know, like the last couple of days I had to take my mom to, she had eye surgery. And so what did I grow up in? In church. And so gospel music. And so I had to make sure I had the gospel music on in the car just for my mom. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's really cool. Um, and then similar question. Like, I know you're incredibly busy and you mm -hmm. don't have a lot of free time, but on the rare occasion you do, how do you like to spend it? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Comatose on the couch. No. Um, <laughs> When someone says, how do I spend like my free time? And it's Minnesota at the moment, and it's, <laughs> it's extremely cold outside. And, and so um, I'm someone who grew up, you know, uh, participating in extracurricular activities. So I enjoy basketball. I enjoy watching people perform. And when I say and I enjoy watching, I like people watching. Um, I enjoy anybody that's good at their craft. I think I enjoy watching them in that. So it could be a CEO, it could be a musician, it, it could be a principal at high school, it could be young people like you um, interviewing me. And, and so for my free time, I love movies. Okay, I, I like going to the movies and just unwinding and letting my mind do that. Um, I li like I said, I like music, so you'll see me at concerts, um, comedy club, comedy store, I'm doing that. And I've lived all across the country, so I've lived in D.C., Baltimore, Annapolis, Chicago, Vegas, New York, Pittsburgh, and now back in Minnesota. And so some people would say you like to travel. Mm. Sure. Um, but I love going to Las Vegas. And it's not about lights, camera, action all the time. Um, I just like going to Vegas because it's like the entertainment capital of the world. And so you see people from all across the world there. So you get on the elevator and you can hear two, three, four, five, six different languages being spoken at the exact same time. Um, and I like heat. And, and so I don't mind, you know, 100 degrees and, yep, let me do that compared to long underwear and skull caps and things of that nature. So. Cool, thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Now to more of the, uh, I guess, technical stuff. Um, what got you into like the field of education? Hmm. What got me into education? So growing up, 
I think I said earlier that my father was a teacher at Valley Middle School. My mom was a, a public school secretary in the Osceola schools, and then she went back to school and got her social work degree and did that in public schools. Uh, education was not what I thought I was doing. Okay, so if you ask me right out of high school, was I going to be a teacher and be in education and be the commissioner? There's no way. Okay, nope. Um, I went to school thinking I was going to be this business major, I was playing basketball in college. Um, I left, when I graduated in college, I went to live in Vegas and worked at the Dunes Casino where the Bellagio is now. So I thought I was going to be doing the casino industry. And then because basketball paid my way through school, um, people thought I should coach at the college level. So I coached at Cornell University and University of Pittsburgh. And that's what I was doing. I was flying around the country. We were really good. Um, you know, and, and, and so I was recruiting students to come to the University of Pittsburgh, and I thought that's what I was going to end up doing. Um, when you say what got me into education, back then, it's, my father passed away here. I had a ninth grade, a sister who was going to be a ninth grader who needed a little extra, her, her, I came home to take care of my sister and to make sure that she had supports to get her through school. And then that's when I started. Um, I became a teacher at Champlain Park High School in the Anoka Hennepin District. And I was there for a bit, and then I got an alternative education at Park Center in the Osceola schools. Then I taught at Minneapolis North. Um, and then I switched over and became an administrator, and I was in the Osceola schools, and then I was at Hopkins as a principal, and uh, St. Paul as an assistant superintendent, and then St. Cloud as a superintendent. And so what got me into education really is my parents moved from Arkansas to Minnesota for a better life for their kids. And it was about access and opportunity. And so for me, access and opportunity has been kind of who I am. And so I'm in education, and it's about access and opportunity for young people. I've always enjoyed conversations with young people, sharing stories, talking about life, um, obstacles in the way, and how to be a, a, a bridge or someone who can support a young person getting to where they want to go. And so that's kind of how I got in education, um, and it sticks with me today with that. It's about that access and opportunity. Thank you. That was a really, I don't know, I guess, beautiful story of Thanks. how you became who you are. Yep. Long-winded, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. And um, I guess just another similar question. As someone who's a leader in education, is there a lot of stress? And if so, how do you handle that? <laughs> is there a lot of stress? And so I, I smile about that because as the commissioner, um, it's approximately 880,000 students across the state of Minnesota. You know, it's approximately 400 districts and charters across the state. And everybody, it, it's about young people. And, and so education is a key to a whole lot of things. Learning is a key to a whole lot of things. And everybody has an opinion about what education should look like. And most people came through schools of some type, so they believe that they have the answers to how it should look and everybody's experience. The stress that comes with that is it's 880,000 students. And so for me, I feel responsible for that. For 880, if I'm the principal at the high school, I feel responsible for my students in the school. Um, and as the commissioner in the state of Minnesota, I, I take that to heart. Um, and so when I, when I go visit sites and things um, around the state, I, I'm supposedly the guy who's in charge of that. Um, and so there's, there's stress that comes with that, whether it's budget, whether it's things that happen in the classroom. For me, it's about a young person's spirit, um, self-esteem, and, and so want you guys to have the best experience you can possibly have and be surrounded and supported by and have relationships with adults and, and have just that good experience. So yeah, there's stress with it, a lot of it actually. Um, what do I do for stress? Um, I'm pretty even keel, I'm pretty, I think, Maybe people around me won't think that. Maybe they'll think I'm a hot mess or, or, or nuts or whatever. But um, I'm usually, what do I do? I'm, it's not like I'm sleeping all the time. That doesn't happen. Um, I go to movies. I, I, I go do things that are outside my comfort zone. I have my select group of friends or mentors who I can call on the phone and just decompress with. I'm pretty good about leaving the responsibilities of the job when I'm when I'm in it okay I'm in it but when I walk out of it you know I'm, I'm a dad um, I'm a son 
And, and so I try to be present during those moments. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to miss when my kids were in school. I was at their ball games and at their dance contests. And so to me, that was stress relief. Um, I'm somebody who, you know, a couple times a year, I'm going to get away. I'm going to go to Vegas. I'm going to sit at a, a comedy store. I'm going to go listen to some music. Um, and, and so um, I think those are some of the things that I do about stress. I, I had past lives. So I was a, I worked in a casino. I worked as a basketball coach. I, I've done so many other things. You're a, as a basketball player, you know, there's stress at times because you got to make a free throw at the end of the game or, or you, you got to make a jumper at the end of the game. And you're doing that in front of thousands of people. And so that's stressful too. And so I kind of play some of that. I'm not going to say everything's relative, but everything's relative. Plus, I'm old. And so when you get old, okay, how much stress is there? Because sometimes you've seen a lot of ways that things are going to play out. Yeah. And also, uh, speaking about being the commissioner, how does it feel being the first African-American commissioner of education in Minnesota? Hmm. Right. And, and so I'm, <laughs> that's another stressor. No, <laughs> there, there's, there's, that's another responsibility. I do believe, I don't know if I'm the first African-American uh, commissioner. I, I know I'm the first African-American male commissioner. Uh, commissioner Casilius, I believe she was the first woman of color who was the commissioner. Um, but in terms of how do I feel about that? Mm -hmm. Proud of that. Um, there's a responsibility that comes with that. Uh, I think I told you earlier, as someone who grew up in the Osseo schools back then in the day, I was one of the only. Mm -hmm. So there's moments and times that where you're the first yeah. doing something. And in my life, I've been the first mm -hmm. doing more than a few things. This one is an honor. Um, this one, I, 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 when I was a principal at Hopkins High School, I had a student one time tell me, she said, it's about time that I have an African-American male principal mm -hmm. or educator in my life. And that struck me. Um, and as I say that, most people think I'm talking about a student of color that would say that to me. Mm -hmm. And I've always had that happen. But this was a young lady who was not of color. It was a white um, student, Caucasian student, mm -hmm. and she said that to me. And that resonated with me much more than she knew at the time. Mm -hmm. And so in the position I'm in now, um, there are moments, you know, you walk into a school or a, a kindergarten classroom and they'll say, are you the president? Mm -hmm. You know, are you the governor? Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you the mayor? Um, and I say, nope, I'm just this guy. Mm -hmm. um, and so what does it feel like? It feels good. Um, it, 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 my, my mom's proud, okay, and my mm -hmm. family's proud of that. And my son and daughter are like, ugh, are you mm -hmm. kidding? Mm -hmm. um, can we just go do something else, please? Um, but there's a responsibility to that. Um, and, and, I, and, I, and I I cherish it. Okay. Um, and, and there's the pressure that you just don't want to screw it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, and for people exactly that don't know what the commissioner does, like, what does the commissioner of education do exactly? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's a great question. And the one thing you asked me what I like to do in my free time, mm -hmm. I like to do things that are never the same. Yeah. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I, I need variety. The commissioner of education, you never know what you're going it, to, it's never dull. Mm -hmm. It's never the same thing. And I've been doing it for a year, so my tenure, I've only been there a year or so now. Commissioners, and like I said, you're in charge of all the different districts in charge across the state of Minnesota. You're that person that people are coming to for supports. Mm -hmm. um, MDE staff, so the Department of Education, that's who actually does all that. And when there's about 400 staff members there, mm -hmm. you are facilitating what's happening in the classroom, teaching and learning. Okay, so you're supporting that. You're supporting administrators um, throughout, the, throughout the state of Minnesota, whether it's principals, district administration, superintendents. Um, you are we are supporting paraprofessionals and bus drivers and cooks and and you name it um, at from the Department of Education perspective I, I get to that part you're supporting you're supporting budgets mm -hmm. okay so you know there's this if you were watching last year there was 5.8 billion dollars from the legislature that came to um, schools across the state of Minnesota or districts across the state of Minnesota one minute I can be at the Capitol Mm -hmm. speaking in front of the House and the Senate. Next minute, I can be sitting here speaking to students. Next minute, I could be um, at a, uh, speaking about the importance of reading um, to business folks. Next thing you know, I could be talking about computer science and, and do something like that. Um, 
there are moments where I'm sitting in a kindergarten classroom. Mm -hmm. There's moments where I'm sitting at a dual immersion Somali uh, classroom. I guess what the Commissioner of Education is really supposed to be doing, in my humble opinion, is providing support for anybody that's affiliated with education across the state of Minnesota, mm -hmm. that where it's going to impact a classroom or teaching and learning. And to me, one of the biggest responsibilities that I feel is to make sure that students have what they need, mm -hmm. that teachers and adults have what they need, um, so that you have the best experience that you could possibly have as you're going through your educational experience or journey. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And so, what is your vision for the f for education, like in the future? You say for Minnesota, or mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> vision. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and I smile at that because when you use the word vision, mm -hmm. I just had my mom at the eye doctor getting surgery, <laughs> so vision that kind of makes me yeah. smile. Um, my vision is for, I think I've probably alluded to this, for students to be able to do what they want to do, have the experience that they want to have, mm -hmm. um, to be able to provide that access and opportunity for students to support students in their journey. As someone who had a rich um, school experience, mm -hmm. but then also had that experience where there was some pain involved in it, that is one of the things that I hope that we can do a better job of as adults throughout the entire state so that students have that relationship with a trusted adult. Doesn't matter if it's a teacher, an administrator, a cook, a para, the, the bus driver. I, I think my vision is for students to be able to find themselves somewhere during that journey, whether it's through extracurricular activities, whether it's in a class, whether it's um, just for them to be able to find themselves, feel good about self. Um, throughout that journey and by the time they get ready to leave, mm -hmm. to have an idea and to also have the joy of learning. Because in the world that you guys are growing up in, you know, when I was growing up, they said you're gonna have one career and what are you gonna do? You guys are changing careers, they always look at 15, 20 different job changes or career paths that you're gonna experience in your future. Yeah. But you, during that, you always have to be able to learn. You gotta be able to, to, to figure out what's the situation and be observant and, and so I had that joy of learning I think that's one of our biggest things is to, or my vision, is for students to have that, that ability to learn different things, um, to not be afraid of it, to feel good about self as they're doing it, mm -hmm. and to be able to find themselves and see themselves in their journey. Okay. And then, if you don't mind, um, would you like to share some of the steps you're taking to make that vision a reality? Hmm. And so when you look at all the different things that were passed in the legislative session this past one, like I said, it was $5.8 billion. There are so many things, um, but I'm just going to give you a couple that you can just grab onto. You're going to hear about the READ Act or literacy, okay? And, and a lot of people tell you that literacy is the key to that learning piece, to be able to read, to be able to feel good about self when you're in classrooms, to be able to digest and process information. And so literacy, that's a real focus for us throughout the state of Minnesota. It is across the country, but for us here in Minnesota, that's a biggie. Um, you're going to hear about the social emotional. Um, the mental health, that's a, that's a big thing. Um, and I think that's something that, for me personally, uh, you heard me talk about just how a young person feels. Um, you're gonna hear us talking about, mm -hmm. oh, you're gonna hear us talking about technology, computer science, um, that's a big push. Why, in this digital age that you guys are growing up in, you gotta be able to do a little bit of anything and everything and feel comfortable with it. That's almost, back in the day, we had to take Spanish and, and, and German and, and French, you guys are doing something that we never even thought about. Mm -hmm. um, something else that I would sit there and think about, um, we've, the governor, we have taken away that basic needs, so like food, and so breakfast, lunch, that's a vision, that's a thing that young people should be able to come to school and not have to think about that. Mm -hmm. Should be able to have a full stomach, be able to concentrate and develop relationships with your fellow students and be ready to learn in a classroom. And so that's, a, that's another thing. There are so many things within that vision, but the simple key for me is to, to remove barriers, to, to cut out the noise so that you guys don't have to deal with noise, so that you can just concentrate on the things that you want to concentrate on, whether that's math, science, reading, music, um, computer science, nursing. Um, that's another thing in this day and age 
everybody talks about, so I gotta go there. Everybody talks about um, post-secondary education. And you know, when I grew up, it was all about, you gotta go to college, you gotta go to college, you gotta go to college. Mm -hmm. But now, that's, there's different routes when you leave school. There's college, there, there, it's post-secondary. There's military, there's the trades, hands-on. Um, there's nursing, there, there's all these different things that you could be doing. And it's, a, it's us, it's our jobs as adults in the Department of Education to open up all those avenues for you. Um, you can, there's quality of life and all of that. And, and so it's our job, I believe, to make sure that students have the ability to do what they want to do, to find their passion. Mm -hmm. And what would you like to say to the Eastview community listening? Mm -hmm. To the Eastview com community. Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> like I said, my father taught at Valley Middle School. Mm -hmm. So besides saying hello to the, mm -hmm. to the entire district or mm -hmm. Eastview High School or the Eastview community, um, it would be, I'm not gonna use the word do you, mm -hmm. but don't let anybody tell you what you can't do, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I'm this smaller guy supposedly who played major college basketball and everybody told me I couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And I got a chance to see the entire country and been across the world, but everybody told me what I wasn't going to be able to do. I would tell the Eastview community, um, my experience with the Eastview community, you know, my son and daughter, we lived in St. Cloud, and anytime we came here, it was about Eastview's dance squad and basketball team mm -hmm. and stuff of that nature. So I would say, I've seen you before, so glad I don't have to experience you anymore of you guys beating us. <laughs> um, so that would be something that I would say to the Eastview community. But I think I would really say to everybody here, um, Cherish the time that you're here. Uh, it, it's it's going to go quickly. Um, make sure you you know who you're, who you can trust and, and and value your teachers and the relationships that you have with there. But as students, just see yourself. Don't let anybody tell you that, again that's what you can and cannot do. Um, and find your passion, and, and find what makes you happy, and then pursue that. That's what I would say. Thank you, Commissioner, for making the time out of your incredibly busy schedule to mm -hmm. come and answer some questions for us. Um, that's all we have for the interview today. Yeah. Okay, Emmanuel and Michael, thank, thank you for the opportunity. Um, in terms of taking time out of my day, this is the most joyful, peaceful, relaxing, fun part of my day. So I'll just say thank you for that invitation. Yeah.